Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All lives matter. It doesn't matter if you're black or white or brown or any color of our marvelous rainbow. In God's eyes, we are all the same, and we all matter. What is your destiny? How will you be remembered? What will they write about you when you're only a memory? These are not the things that motivate our behavior, but it is true that how we act is what will be remembered. We can take nothing with us when we go. We leave all manner of things behind. Our stuff does not contain us, and our history is not contained in things, but in the memories of those who know us. What do the people who know you, who really know you, what do they know about you? What stands out about you? What will be remembered? Tomorrow, this weekend actually, because who doesn't love a good sale, America honors a remarkable man, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. King was a great man, there's no question about it. We know, about, we know a lot about his work to end segregation and about his dreams for the future of all oppressed people, specifically black people in America. But we have a habit of setting people on pedestals that distance them from us. We make them superhuman so as to set them up where we can't possibly go or be expected to go. The truth is that Martin was a human man with shortcomings like me and you. From some of what we know, we know that he suffered from depression for most of his life. He was traumatized by his grandmother's death and afterwards, he attempted suicide at the tender age of 12. Thankfully, jumping from the second story window of his family home only served to injure the young boy. His love and compassion were clear at an early age. As a teenager in the mid-1940s, the young king went to Connecticut to pick tobacco where he was moved that there were racially integrated church services. More than a decade later, he would famously say, it is appalling that the most segregated hour of Christian America is 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning. The fact that King could not enjoy such freedoms in most of his native Deep South inspired him to become a pastor. When King applied to Crozier Theological Seminary in 1951, he stated that after a second summer's exposure to northern racial tolerance, I felt an inescapable urge to serve society. In short, I felt a sense of responsibility which I could not escape. I talk about these parts of Dr. King's life not to diminish him, but to remind us that he was a human man, a great man for sure. He was brave, honest, and true, but he wasn't perfect. No human is perfect except the one who came to show us the way to live together as perfectly as we can, Jesus Christ. In today's gospel, Jesus tells us to love our enemies, do good to those who hate us, pray for those who abuse you, give to everyone who begs from you. 
I'm sure you would agree that Jesus is pretty clear in this teaching. A while ago, I told you about a homeless man who comes to Rye. He comes to Christ Church, and if you've ever been in the building when he comes, you know he's truly hum homeless. I used him in a prior sermon as a model of how Jesus might come to us. I even said he was Jesus for me. But the truth is, he is not Jesus for everyone. Sometimes when Jesus teaches in metaphor, it is just that, a metaphor. That truly giving a man the coat off your back means to get him the help that he needs desperately. Certainly, if you've ever been abused, you would not want to sit down to dinner with your abuser. But Jesus asks us to entertain, not to entertain, but to pray, to pray, not to entertain. Dr. King was drafted into a movement that shaped our memory of him. He did not specifically go searching for it, but he was the right man at the right time. He followed his destiny, and sadly that led to his death. His example is a powerful one. It is truly Christ-like. The parallels between King's life and Jesus are startling and worthy of a lot closer examination than this morning allows. Perhaps one might say that we'll have a class on that one day, but that's not for this morning. Through our baptismal vows, we are called to this same life. Our causes are not necessarily the same as Dr. King's, but they are just as pressing for us and necessary to set the world, our world, right. Jesus' teaching to love our enemies, do good, and lend expecting nothing in return is very clear. The question here is how do we live into that teaching? What is your destiny? What is my destiny? Actually, I want to use a different word because destiny implies there's one way things will turn out, as in predestined, and I don't believe that. We know from experience that we can't sit back and let life happen for us. I believe that we make choices to become who we are. Actually, to live into who God wants us to be. The good news is that we have the teachings from Jesus to use as our model of how to live. And that leads us to live into who God wants us to be. Think back to our baptismal promises. We renewed them last week, and you can always find them in your prayer book on page 304. We promise to persevere in resisting evil, proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ, seek and serve Christ in all persons, strive for justice and peace among all people. I know I've conflated them, but can't you just hear Dr. King speaking? How can Christ Church help you? Not only do we want to be a resource of community, we want to help you find the good in yourself. We want to set you on your own path to fulfill who God wants you to be. Perhaps there's an outreach project that will do that. We have many. Perhaps it's more of an in-reach project. We have those too. Perhaps it's entirely something other. We can help you find that. I spoke about how we have set Dr. King on a pedestal as a great man. Remember, he was a human man like us. We each have our own pedestal to stand on. It will be for different reasons. What will the reason for your pedestal be? The physicists teach us that energy never goes away. It merely changes. 
We are made of energy. Our mortal bodies will perish, but our history lives on. What is your history going to say about you? What energies will live on in your name? Spirit of abundance, God of grace, mother of hope. I pray that following you will expand our possibilities. Help us to grow into who we are meant to be and that our energy will live on with Christ, the true King, now and always.